Good morning. Good night. Oh, wherever you are hearing this lovely, sweet voice of mine, ah, I come your way every Tuesday morning to greet you and also to come and encourage you about whatever you are going through. Adonai, I always tell you, it's still in the making business. And one thing that I want you to do for me is to start sharing. And by sharing, I will tell you, you automatically becomes who? An evangelist. Share on your Facebook, Instagram, uh, or even on your TikTok. Yes, WhatsApp. And let everyone on your contact have this. And as I always tell you this, life in this world is indeed a great struggle, both for the young and old. And all, even those who always think that they have all the great riches that you are admiring, they also have the troubles of their will. That is why we come your way with my encounter at Jericho to share our encounters in life and how far Adona put us from and where he has taken us to and where he is still moving us on to. As we are still alive, we, are still, we still have hope because even the tree that is cut still have hope that when rain falls, it was still germinate. Good morning once more again. Good afternoon once more again, wherever you are. I say good morning to our father, Pastor Mark Asante Menu and Mama Comfort Asante Menu. I say wherever you are, I say good, good, good morning to you all. It is by your grace and you giving us this great opportunity. And we are also here to exhibit what God has given unto us to save lives out there. And also to the church board, we say good morning to you. To all the associate pastors, we say good morning and God bless you all for your prayers and your support. To my husband and my children, I say good morning. Ah, to my manager, Apostle Good Water Isaac, I say good morning, good afternoon to you wherever you are today. 
Good. As we were here last week, and we had a very great, wonderful apostle, Dr. Reverend Leiford Bohene, who came our way to bless us. And today, we are continuing a part two. But we are continuing because we wanted to hear the cheese and where God has brought him. Because many are admiring, and someone, an apostle called and said, oh, even his voice is even touching. Yeah. I know the voice yeah. is also touching you and sending a great message unto you. Apostle Bohene, good morning once more again, and welcome to my encounter at Jericho. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it looks like it's only upper room that can get me again for the second time. And uh, uh, upper room bronze. Assemblies of God coming. At this is my second church now. <laughs> my respect for your pastor. He's a senior brother. I've known him over the years, all the way from Ghana. And he has kept his course. And I like his dedication to God's work. So thank you very much. And um, I'm glad to come again on your platform for the purpose of the furtherance of the kingdom and to bless many people that will be coming across this video and also listening to us. And thank you very much, Pastor Linda Amwa. You, you're doing so wonderful. God bless you. God bless you too for honoring our invitation for the second time. You know how special, you're making me blush, how special I look. <laughs> Okay, viewers, last week, uh, uh, doctor shared with us a general life experience starting from school time, where he started his schooling, what happened during his ministry, how he got to have an encounter with God, and what even happened when parents decided to stop him, and now the full support has been given unto him. So today we want to know... Um, where he started his ministry, and then also the encounters he has gotten doing ministry. I told you last week that Reverend is a book writer, and I know that he's gotten so many encounters and solutions. That is why he's putting all of them into the books he's written, so that you and I, when we go through and read, we will be able to know what to do and where to get to. So Reverend, we are listening to you today. How did you come became full ministry. Let's start from there. How did you become a full minister? Because you told us last week that when you came here in the state, you even had to move from one point to Chicago, somebody who has come so fresh. So how did ministry begin? Thank you so much. Well, it will take us a little bit back okay. uh, from Ghana. And so I'll continue. I think last week we ended on how... Um, I graduated from school, uh -huh. and uh, so I pick it from there because my ministry was very much more in um, consonant with my secular education. So from, like I said, from the university, the things we were doing, the missions um, that we undertook. So we were so much involved and the people that were surrounding my life were people that were where and asked to in ministry, you know, some of them into full time, some of them being preachers, uh, some to uh, their tent workers. Um, they, they do other things, but they are also into active ministry in their various uh, churches. So um, right from Kwame uh, Nkoma University of Science and Technology, um, I had to work. So I worked with uh, a man by name Tala Fatal, uh, uh, blessed memory. Uh -huh. uh, he had uh, his, his station, his TV station, his Metro TV now. Uh -huh. um, it started as, um, it was called Media One, uh, number one, somewhere around Labadi area. Um, that's where he, Media, Media number one or something. Yeah. And then he, you know, it, it graduated to become um, Metro, TV. Metro TV. So from school, uh, I was with part of, part of his production crew. And then we're also part of the technical crew uh, designing and all that. So that's actually my background. So <clears throat> from then, you know, um, we'll go to work as usual and, and all that. But one afternoon, 
I had my spiritual father was uh, having his fast. He had a, a long fast, about 40 days fast. He had then left North Canadian Assembly of God, and he was at um, a place called East Airport now, but it used to call Matichu. So he took a church, a transcontinental worship center. It was from the military base from Bema Camp. They got a land at Matichu, and then they went there. In fact, it was very horrible place, very bad place. You know, we came from North Kanishi, and comparatively, um, you can see that he was really in the wilderness compared to where we were from because he was the associate pastor and then they gave him that church. And some of us came along with him. He was having a long fast in East Legon. So one afternoon, my first encounter, I went to work. And uh, that day I felt, I think I, I, could, I didn't really feel myself. It was very you know, unusual for me to be, you know, in the production room, we put things together for the news and all that. And I was just behind the computer and I, I felt so drowsy. So I, I slept, I, I placed my head on the table and slept and I had a dream. Yeah. About two minutes, I just I was just caught up in this trance. I saw a lot of pigs and I was driving the pigs away. From from the setting was like the you know the pyramid house. It was on the ring ring road. You know we he bought the pyramid house. That's uh, our manager, uh, Talal Fatah, and so that was when Metro TV had begun. Paula Domotri and all those people were there. He has done well, very well to stay. He's still he's still very active and powerful. Hey, Paul, wherever yeah. you are, you might not really remember me, but. Hi to you and keep keep up with a good job. So I had this um, trance and I was driving out a lot of pigs. Then a voice came and said to me, "Do you is this what you want to do?" So I, I, I woke up and I didn't understand the dreams. Why am I driving out pigs? Then later on, I saw in a trance. One more time. That's why I wasn't sleeping, but I saw sheep, a lot of sheep, and I was leading the sheep. So that afternoon, I took my bag. I left the office. I never went back. And I'm a man of conviction. When I'm convinced about something, especially about the leading of the Lord, nothing changes my mind. And I think that grace has really helped me. I never look back. I, I took a car, I went to East Legon. My, my spiritual father was fasting and, and I got there. And he used to tell me that when the time comes, you will know. So he was looking at me, he said, why? Why are you here? I said, um, I want to come and continue to pray with you. I'm not going to work and I'm not going back again. And that is it. So from there, I went to Maranatha Bible School at Sotum for almost about a year. It was a Baptist school. Mm -hmm. Then my pastor said, no. Uh, my spiritual father said, no, you're an assembly of God. You, you know, I believe that this is your path and you got to be careful. So I want you to go back to SGBC. So I went to SGBC. I was supposed to start in the second year, but um, I started from the first year. It's about uh, a diploma course. And, and and I went through. So that is my Bible school journey. Every night I'll go out and I'll be praying. And on the field, I'll be seeing a big mission field. It's like an uh, endless field. And uh, I'll be speaking the word of God. And most times it looks like it's not in Ghana. But I didn't know what God was going to do. So I graduated. I served and uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Joseph Basie for seven years as a senior associate. I served with, and I thank God for his, his mentorship, his coaching. He's, he's a very loving father, gave me all the opportunities with myself. And uh, I, I told you about um, Reverend Wingham, uh -huh. Dr. Wingham, you know, we'll go to youth camps where we'll be preaching because our pastor, my pastor will give us that leverage, that opening to preach and all that. So we started developing from that, that base. But the Lord will have it to be, my wife's parents were here. The dad was in New York. 
and they had found for them. So just one year into my marriage, one day we're on we're sleeping. Then I had I've heard God's voice twice audibly, like somebody talking to you. Yeah, that's been my, my experience, one of my encounters. So the first one was in January the 15th, 2001. I was just lying there, and then the voice of the Lord came clearly to me. And so I thought that my wife heard it, and the room started spinning. And one thing about the experience I had was that so as if the, the voice, you know, usually when somebody's communicating to is speaking to through your ear gate, through your ears. But this one, I was hearing it in my spirit. Oh. Yeah. I was hearing it as if, you know, if the person continued to speak, you might even collapse or die. Very, very powerful. I heard it clearly. But she was lying by my side. She didn't hear. And the room started spinning. The room started spinning. And the Lord said, I have a word for you. I have a word for you. So I saw that I had been separated from where I was. And there was a big gulf between where I was to another place. And wherever I go, it's like as if I'm setting up fire. I move from place to place, setting up fire. You know, I'll preach and then there'll be fire. And then the Lord, the spirit of the Lord will move me to another location. I'll preach, there'll be fire. He'll move me to another location. I'll preach. I, I kept it down wrote it and that's why I remember the date. I remember it vividly and the time. So I kept that and I was still serving as an associate pastor because I didn't really understand what it was. The Lord opened a door 2001, that same year, my wife had to join the, the parent year and came to New York. So she, she was in bronze. <laughs> they were in bronze and then in September 9-11 you know what happened in America yeah. in New York yes so that's where the dad took them and then they went to Ohio Columbus, yeah. Ohio and apparently uh, Apostle Akumia had just started his church in a basement from oh. Texas yes, Houston and as the Lord will have it to be, when they moved, my wife too, as an Assembly of God member. So they were the core. So my wife was her first administrator. Oh. And uh, to, she helped in the structuring of women's ministry and all that. So she she served Reverend Akumia, became her first administrator. Now, I wanted to join, you know, you, you have your your family. I, I wanted to join because my daughter was also with her and I wanted to join. And it took me seven years, exactly seven years before I joined. But then I came in as a pastor because I've already served as an associate pastor. I came in as a pastor and I joined her in Columbus, Ohio in mm -hmm. 2008. But then before I came, then the Lord told me, that's where your work is going to be. That's the explanation of the gulf I saw some years back. And that the name will be called Christ Center of Hope. I've given you the message of hope. And last week I said, when God sends you, he has to send you to a people, give you a message, your location and everything. I would like to read the scripture because it will help uh, as we go on a little bit more in Deuteronomy chapter 2, I think verse 6. Deuteronomy 2 um, verse 5. Deuteronomy 2 5. Let me read from verse 4. Deuteronomy 2 from verse 4. And I command thou the people saying, ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Verse 5. Mendel not with them, for I will not give you of their land, 
No, not so much as a foot's breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Okay. This is really going to help as we, 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 we move on. So when I came in, I knew this is where the Lord has sent me. My spiritual father told me, listen, the, 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 I knew that you are an apostle and all that. I didn't want to come. In fact, my plan was that <laughs> I wanted to come in and go back. Because you see, ministry in Ghana was was good. You know, yeah, we we're doing very well. We we're building at that time, doing very well. You travel, I was the one who take care of the church, ministry, having revival everywhere. So that fire thing, I knew it. I was called as a revivalist. And I thought it was in Ghana. I was doing my own thing until you know, I needed to come. And it is very important. We may do great things, but our family life as a minister is very, very important. So that is my first call that I have to be at least with my family. So that is how I came to America. Mm -hmm. And when I came, um, they were in Columbus. So I came in and by the grace of God, through Apostle Akomia, and um, I didn't know anywhere uh, about America, didn't know anything. And okay. through him, by the grace of God, the Lord led me to Chicago because I told him, uh, you know, the Lord told me about Chicago and I don't know anything about Chicago. And he said, I'll, I'll, I'll take you there. So he was the one who drove us to Chicago. We met some few people here that he knew and we had to move here. So we moved in here, 2009, the ministry began. When we, we read that scripture, we saw how God told Moses to send the children of Israel from the mountain and move towards the land that he has shown them. But God told them, I have given you all the land, but the mountains of Seir belongs to Esau. He said, I will not even give you the breadth of your foot of that land. I have given it to Esau and his descendants. It doesn't belong to you. This is what I have given to Esau. So I'm saying this to confirm the fact that where God has not given to you, you will not succeed. Mm. Yes. And if anybody listening to me who wants to come to America or go to Europe or go to China, go ye into the world and preach the gospel is true. But there are some places God has not given to you, and you cannot make a mistake. No matter where I go in the world, when I get to Chicago, it's as if I said, I feel like I'm home. I really feel the connection because that is where God has given to me. You see, people will travel and say, you know, uh, maybe uh, this place or that place may look lucrative to do ministry and all that, but... Listen, the temptations, the battles, the principalities, the powers, the system itself, if God has not given their place to you, you will not do well. There was no way the children of Israel could have done well on the land of Seir, on the mountains of Seir, because God did not give them the land of Israel. So we need to be very careful in our apostolic work, in our ministry, where did the Lord really plant you? Because many from Africa come to places like this and they mess up. There are many pastors who are not doing ministry anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not that they didn't want to. They had the zeal. They had the power. They had the anointing. But where did God give to you? Mm -hmm. Where did God give to you? And um, I'm very grateful. I'm going to pause here. Maybe you, you take me to another level. So I'm going to pause here to say this is the very beginnings of my ministry, seven years in Ghana as a pastor and associate pastor, Assemblies of God pastor, Assemblies of God Ghana, came here not because uh, I was looking for greener pastures. I came here because I have to be with my family. It's like abandoning your ministry and then you know seeing the importance of family. And of course, when I came here, the Lord had already spoken and directed me. That's why I didn't stay in Columbus. That is why the church is called Christ Center of Hope. And that is why I am in Chicago, because the Lord led us here, and the rest oh. is to his glory. Amen. 
indeed the rest is to his glory. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I'm taking something. Where God has not sent you, you can't possess that land. Mm -hmm. And if God sends you, last week also learned that, if God sends you, he sends you one to a land, to a people, and he gives you a word. What are your words and where have you been sent to? Don't just lift up a Bible and say, God has sent me, God has sent me, whereby you have no location, you have nowhere you are going and you have nowhere or a message that has sent you. If God sends you, he sends you for a reason and sends you for a purpose. God bless you, Reverend Lee, for yes. would like you to sip some water and then we acknowledge our viewers online. Amen. Mm. Pastor Rita Botin is watching with us. He said, Mommy, you are looking good as usual. Thank you very much. Mommy, he said, welcome. We welcome you, great apostle in our time. Say, yes, oh, apostle. We salute you and thanks for coming again. We love you. Reverend Maxwell Amwakon Edinkra is also watching. He says, amen and amen and more fire. Our father, Pastor Mark Asante Menu is also watching. He says, I salute you, apostle of Chicago, Reverend Dr. Lee Ford Bonini. Yes, and then the King Anakodia is also watching with us. Apostle said PK Boatin is also watching. The King Kodia says more fire. Pastor Rita goes on to say family is very important. It's true, Apostle. And then he says that amen and amen. God give you what belongs to to you. God will give you what belongs to you. Pastor Mark Asante Manu says that when God calls you, he gives you a place where God has not planted you, you will not succeed. Yes, indeed. And then Pastor Rita goes on this apostle, if we understand this as ministers of God, there will be no competition among members. Indeed, there will be no competition among members because we all have our own way and where God and then what God has given to us to do. We have so many people on uh, YouTube, but please, as I always say, if you are on YouTube and you don't give us a hi, a way we can't acknowledge you. And I always want to acknowledge my viewers because it's very important and it's also glad and sad job. I had to see you watching and then also loving the program you are doing. So beloved, I also encourage you to keep sharing, keep sharing. So the last person on all your social media handles receives this because we are getting a message. And even not only in ministry, in even in our various occupations, our professionals that God, professions God has given unto us. If God has not given you that particular work to do, beloved, you will struggle. Others will be doing well. Others will be going through so successfully. But you will ask yourself, you ask yourself that it's as if that even the income that you are being given is different from theirs. But it could even be that you are even earning higher than them. But because that is not the place God has planted you, you can't succeed. Let's seek God. And as I say, he is still in the making business. Allow yourself and allow him to make you. We are the clay and he is the porter. Ask him where you want me to be and where he plants you, you will surely bloom. We're going back to Reverend and I know Reverend has a lot to share with us. So Reverend, you've been in Chicago yes. as a freshie and then Christ giving you the name of the church as center of hope the hope he has given unto you, meaning that he knows that you are going to rely on him solely because he is only the one that you are really the pillar that has sent you, the one that has sent you, say he's giving you an expected end. How were you able to acquire a place mm. to start ministry? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see that today I have to give every details, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a very good question. Um, so one day uh, the Lord told me it's time for you to, to move, to, to move from Columbus. Um, and once again, uh, Apostle Komia, wherever he is, we, we salute him uh, because we, we didn't, I didn't know anywhere. So our first, I call it the first missionary journey. We came, we surveyed the place. I went back, we prayed. It was in May, 2009. Uh, I think, yes. And the Lord said, you got to go. And that is the longest journey I've ever taken in my life. I tell you, I called my wife and she's been very supportive. I thank God for that lady's life. I mean, oh. she's an angel to my life very much. She doesn't talk much, very powerful, great intercessor. 
Most people see my ministry, admire what God is doing, but I know that she's a great, 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 great contribution to my ministry. Very mm -hmm. much. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with that two people that when I know they say I'm praying for you, I believe my mother and my wife. Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 I mean, she will fast and pray and pray and pray. I pray, but people don't know about that woman. Very, very, very calm and very prayerful. So I told her, she said, okay, then we got to go. Because most times when I, I tell her something during those early days, I just, because I was struggling as a normal human being, I mean, there was a struggle. If she said no, then I'll get an excuse. <laughs> At the point I was becoming like Jonah because, you know, the attraction of ministry from, from Ghana and what I was doing was still kind of calling me. There were members that were calling me, Pastor, are you sure? Pastor, you can go a little bit and come back. Uh, you can just visit them and come back. Are you sure? I mean, well-meaning people, the people who have gone through my life, their life has been blessed and all that. So they, they were calling, we had contacts and all that. So when I said the Lord said we should move, she said, okay. We went for you haul and I couldn't drive because I've not had my license. This is how serious. I want to, you know, give you the details so that somebody will really be encouraged. Uh -huh. you know? So we 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 went for the U-Haul, pack all her stuff. She she was living there before I came. So she'd been in America almost about um, eight years before I came. So pack everything to the U-Haul. She had a car. We put it at the back of the U-Haul. And then now who is going to drive? <laughs> and that was my first, first shocker. Okay. So now in, in Ghana, if a pastor is going to do something, you will have people that will be willing. They have the time, you know, to, to be there for the pastor and even oh. packing up your things and all that. And I say, wow, today, <laughs> But people are going to work. That was the first shocker. There were young men in the church, Jesus power, but you know, they have to go to work. Yeah. So we we did it ourselves. And then now who was going to drive? And he, she said, I'll drive. And she had taken immediately I came by the grace of God. She has taken in of her second boy. And then my daughter, she wouldn't go to school. We took off very early morning and come to think of it. My in-laws called me that done and they said also for because they, they they've been to ghana they see my ministry they say are you sure of what you are doing so who is at chicago there you're not going to you're taking our daughter and have it everything and then i told to just calm them down i said we're going to find out if things doesn't go well we will come, we'll back. come back just to calm the nerves of a loving mother and a loving father for their daughter and they allowed us to leave. And my wife was the one that drove. We were moving like tortoise. You know, a, a U-Haul, very heavy. And oh. then with the truck at the back, and she was pregnant. That day, it rained or spring. So it rained. There were cut. I mean, raining cut and dogs would go a little bit. And we pack and then we move. It took us about a journey of about five or six hours. took us about nine hours. And then my, my daughter said, Daddy, where are we going? And I remember the story of Abraham, Abraham and, and Isaac. And I said, my daughter, God will provide. Wow. Yes. God will provide. We, we moved by faith. So my first book was called Stretch Your Faith. Mm. You move. Sometimes you have the faith, but you have to stretch it. Mm. And we moved by faith. We came to Chicago, found a place and rented and I started the ministry from my living room, you know, not knowing the laws of America. <laughs> and you know how I can pray. And uh, we were doing ministry. We met the first Sunday, the second Sunday. My daughter said, Daddy, we have to take offering. And I said, hey. So my first congregation was my wife. They were, I would call them two and, two and a half. My <laughs> wife who was pregnant, so that they have, and then my daughter. They were, they were my congregation. And every oh. Sunday I would preach, we would have praises. And, and, and then, you know, we dance around the, the center table. And then we did that for about two, three weeks. And the Spirit of the Lord said, hey, nobody's going to come already. 
you know, your neighbors is going to, will, will be giving you a can call police on you. You know, and it, it, in Africa, you know, anything goes. So I said, no, then I have to find a place. So one Saturday I moved to town. I wanted to, you know, um, go to the barber shop. Apparently there was um, a funeral that occurred in, in Columbus, Jesus Power. And some people moved from Chicago to attend that funeral. And I connected with a young man by name. I think his name was uh, or being or so. Yeah, I connected with him and he was a barber. So he was the one I had. I called his number. He said, OK, come around. Then I started asking him about getting a place to rent. He led me to this building. We call it Church Mall owned by an Italian, 55, 45, 54 on Broadway, Wilson and Broadway in Chicago. It's a huge building, but he has rented out pockets of offices for businesses and for churches and for saloons and all that. He, the man was making good money. He was an Italian. So he led me to that building. He said, well, in this vicinity or community, this is where most of the churches are, oh, I was so disappointed when I entered the, 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 the place. I said, Lord, why did you send me here then? There was Christ Apostolic. Then they were all small, 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 tiny churches. Christ Apostolic, Pentecost. Now, Pentecost had their own place. But I saw Christ Apostolic. There were all kinds of churches. Even, uh, um, uh, we call is it? Uh, uh, Aladura or something, you know. Aladura, I, yeah. Yeah, I saw that one too. Nigerians were there, uh, Congolese, all kinds of and the whole building. There were it's about three floors and churches and businesses. I went to see the man and he said, "Well, there's no space, but you know, like the story of Joseph and Mary when they had to deliver Jesus, said there is no space, but there's this small room." Oh that can take about almost 10 or 15 people, very small. Even my office is bigger than that room, where I started from. Small room, immediately I entered the Lord said, this is the place. I said, what? How can I start from here? And I said, okay. So we spoke with the man, we negotiated and all that. I went home, I was quite happy. I told my wife, you know what, there's a miracle. I went, you know, to the barber, but I found a place and she was also excited. And coming from a very big church, I saw that her expectation was great. She said, can we go and see it? Can we go and see it? We need to buy some chairs from Walmart and you know, start something. She was so excited. I led her to the room and he said, what here? Tell about this kind of year. This is, she said completely, that this is not a church. I said, yes, I know it's not a church. But the Lord said, we should start. We should start from here. And I said, okay, all right, okay. So we went to Walmart. We got about 15 chairs. And another funny thing, when I bought the chairs, I didn't know the weather of Chicago. I came during the spring and winter is crazy here. Mm. And I have, my money could only afford the metallic ones. So you can imagine when the people started coming in and they sit down, it's already oh. cold and they were sitting on metal chairs. <laughs> so the ladies put their hand under their ties like this and freezing up. Oh, my goodness. The beginning was very rough. Mm. Very, very rough. Mm. But I want to uh, pause here and really uh, acknowledge the encouragement of your, your first lady, Mama mm. Comfort. Yes. And then, of Thank course, you. your pastor. Uh, barely when I've come in, he started the Rulers Convention. So I was the first speaker of your Rulers Convention in June. Wow. Yes, barely when I've come in. So he bought the ticket and he said, also for come around. That's what the Lord has laid on my heart. And that time too, he was also renting a place. God moved mightily. And there was a prophetic word that um, you guys will buy a place and all that. And the Lord really set us on a very high tone. Mm -hmm. Then your, your first lady, one time I was sitting in, a, in the living room and she started talking. Maybe she will not remember. She started talking. He said, hmm, pastor, after American churches like that too, then she started narrating what they have been through. And the Lord bless your pastor because 
It was through her that I got to know that even your pastor was sleeping in a car. Uh -huh. He slept in a car. Uh -huh. You know, today everybody's seeing the uh, bronze assemblies of God, the upper room scene, uh, you know, Apostle Marco, Asante Menu, and all, but people don't really know what we go through. Yeah. I have, uh, you know, a, 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 a dick, a dick in that will, will whisper to me and say, hey, will be my answer. You know, mm. we, it is not where we come from, but mm. you have been sent and left out there. That really encouraged me for me to know how they began. And that pastor was even sleeping in a car. So I started thinking, I said, well, I'm not sleeping in a car, at least to start with. But if God has brought them this far, and let me say this, if you can raise about 10 or 15 people in a land like this, mm. as your church members, 10 mm. or 15, it's, a, it's equal to any it mega lasts. church in Nigeria or in Ghana. Yeah. Believe you me, if you can get 10 people here, mm. you are called. Mm. I'm telling you, you are mm. called. Mm. Our pastors who have been here doing ministry over eight years, they don't even have a member. They have yeah. their own church that their wife and children will not even come. Mm -hmm. They No. Eight mm -hmm. years, no member. He's still yet to start. Yet he has a ministry, he's registered and everything. About eight years, no member. So if you can raise about 10 people here, because here every Sunday people are going to work. It is a great sacrifice for him to leave his, his, his salary. And come to church. And come to church. Leave his pay. And we are being paid, they are being paid hourly. Yeah. Every second is money. For an American here. Mm. And the system is cleverly weaved in such a way that you cannot work here and not and survive. You have yeah. to work. You yeah. must contribute to Uncle Sam, contribute to the economy in any way whatsoever. And any money that comes into your hand, they'll make sure that it passes through the system. So it's absolutely different for people to come in here and think that maybe our brothers and sisters here are not anointed enough. Sometimes you invite people and you, 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 you watch them from their speech and all that. But a, a real apostle sent here. You have to clean the church by yourself. Yeah. You have to do your praise and worship by yourself. Uh -huh. You have to sometimes have to play the drum in any way by yourself to support. Or even try getting the, some hymns the out keyboards. of the keyboard. Until... At a certain time, within the path of your spiritual journey as a church, that God begins to bring people. And even with that, they want to see the sincerity of your heart. You will be called at certain odd hours. Your member can call you and say, Pastor, I need a ride to work. And you have to go and pick him and drive him home <laughs> or pick his son or child from school. It's all mm -hmm. part of the ministry. They want to see how much you care. They don't care how much you know. Or anointed, they want to see how much you care before they can be part of because they're big family. You are his uncle, you are his husband, you are his everything. And so it's a different ball game, and that is how I was encouraged. And I need to chip in bits so that people will know that it's not been easy. It's not an easy road. I've been a pastor in Ghana. I tell you, it's nothing to be compared with over here. People are really doing ministry really, really doing what we call ministry. Oh. You are a psychiatrist, you are a counselor, you are everything. You are an organizer. You are an organizer, <laughs> you, you are everything. Sometimes something is broken, you need to be able to pull some, some skills, whether you've learned carpentry or you have, not, you have to be electrician, a carpenter, everything, a media person. I mean, people are doing ministry. So, Apostle Asante Menu, I, I, I salute you. And I salute your wife. So my God really used her that day to really encourage me. And I said, well, there's no turning back. And this is how far the Lord has brought us. Amen. Amen. This is how far the Lord has brought us. Yes. Daddy, I wanted Daddy to give us uh, details. Yes, indeed. Because we <laughs> needed it. Beloved, we needed it. People in Ghana think that if you are a pastor here in America, that means it's a breakthrough altogether. Yeah, yeah. You are in Ghana. The land is already a breakthrough land. Yeah. 
So wherever you plant, it really germinates. Mm. 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 Now they will do the evangelism work for you. They will even come to polish your shoes and everything. But here, <laughs> when we say <laughs> that Peter was describing in First Peter chapter uh, one verse one to three, he said, "I as a servant, a bond servant." Mm. You become a tent builder yourself as a, a, an ordained minister of God because you have to do all the 10 things that you are supposed to do as that is given as the details. If you are a pastor out there and you have been here, don't think that if your church members are not bowing to you, mm. let me repeat it again. If your church members are not bowing to you, coming to your house to serve you and all those things, and you just came from Ghana, don't think that they are disrespectful. No, as Daddy Rifle said, Time is money, and you expect them to go leave their work, come sit under you, to serve you, and at the same time pay their tithe and give offering. No, it doesn't work like that over here. For Ghana, you go in to sign in, and then you can come back home. But here, you punch in and out. And then it's the time that you punch in, and your timing of out is how you are being paid. And that is the level of your income or your tithe you'll be able to also to give out out there. You'll be able to fulfill what God has given unto you. If you are out there, and you are listening to us this afternoon or this morning or this evening or this night, wherever you are, under the globes, we are here to encourage you. Although daddy is talking about ministry, but you can also chip it in. He said, stretch out your faith. I've taken this also, stretch out your faith. Sometimes you need to stretch it out. We are talking about ministry, but stretch out the profession that God has given to you. Stretch out the faith that God has given to you where he has planted you. And if you are facing difficulties, know that in such a time like this, in such a time like this, the word Mordecai gave unto Esther. He said, how will you know that God planted you here in such a time like this? Today is also such a time like this for you also. Don't let your wife get finished. Christ went into the wedding day and then it was a, such a time like this. So whatever he told them to do, they did it. If you will follow up, you will be able to do it. I'll come online for the last reading, but I want Daddy to go on with the message he's giving to us. I'm too enlightened today and very much encouraged. I'm stretching out my feet. What about you? Amen. 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 <laughs> so Daddy, yes. being there and then starting ministry, you know, buying the chairs, people coming in. I know definitely you'll be doing evangelism. Mommy will also be helping out, you know, such a building like this. How did God finally landed you to where you are now? The center of hope. Amen. 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 I read the scripture from um, Acts 16, verse 6, quickly. It says that now when they had gone throughout Fijia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy, Holy Ghost to preach to preach the word in Asia. They were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, when we continue, that's about Paul and Silas. Mm -hmm. You know, they were forbidden taking the word to Asia by the Holy Spirit. But then he made provision for them to be in Galatia and Fiji. And because the Lord led them through, that was where later on they had the Macedonian call. Mm -hmm. Where God gives you a vision, he will give you the provision. Oh God. If he really sent you, he will make a way. Mm -hmm. And I have really learned to trust God. In our journey, we, we've been in America about um, 13, I mean, about 14 years. The church is about 13 years now. And we are moving on. I have really seen divine provision because we started with nothing, like I said. And later on, God started making a way. Now, one of the encounters, one of the encounters that we had about the church was that, you know, at a point people were now, now hearing about the Assemblies of God Church here and all that. In our location in, in Chicago, we are the north side. Chicago is the third largest city in America. So it's, oh. it's very huge. Yeah, so, but we are the north side. So in our community here, people are not hearing about it. Then the question of how we support ourselves. But my wife sacrificed because of the ministry. She really sacrificed to support me in everything that I was doing. So uh, you, we, we trusted God. 
to know how the next stage of provision is going to come from. And that's why I quoted that scripture, because he gave the vision. Now, this was what happened. There was a man who will come in at a certain time when you're getting closer to us paying the lease and then the uh, the bills. And I was surprised to know that apart from water bill and electricity bill, there was a gas bill. <laughs> I did my budget and I left out the gas bill. And that was about, and that was even the the quantum part of the income that comes into your hands or whatever comes in when you pay the lease or your mortgage or your, you know. That was your, your rent. That was your, your gas is always something, especially to, towards the cold era. And um, this man will come. He will come at the time when I'm about to finish preaching and drop an envelope and leave. Wow. Yes. And when I open it, to be about $2,000 check. Wow. Oh, yes, $3,000 check. And he will leave. Sometimes the message will not end. Then the man will leave. There was a time I said, ah, am I not preaching that good? Why is the man leaving? Yet he, he, he drops an envelope. Huge envelope. I never had a chance to engage this man. Powerful. Yes. If God really called you, he will never disgrace you. There was a time he wasn't coming. I said, Lord, <laughs> this man must show up at least once in a month. If he shows up, because people were not there to tie. I mean, how much? Something money? changes financially. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, the irony of it is that my first usher that counted the money, Later, I heard in town that they said, oh, the new church, their offering is $8. And they were just, <laughs> that was another shocker. I said, hey, <laughs> you can't take church money, you are gossiping outside there. <laughs> well, so I said, no, this man will have to stay. So I tried to preach to him, but he got up and then he left. I believe so much that it was an angelic Angel. provision. Yes. I never encountered him. Oh. One time we were standing out there, the man came to me in Italy and said, are you going to pay my money or what? I mean, uh, he, he comes aggressive. I said, oh, yes, Papa, just cool down. We, we're going to settle everything. Then one of my ushers came and said, Daddy, I met the man at the car park. I said, wow. And, and so I told her, run and try and see if you can trace a, a path. We did this. I never engaged the man. When this man stopped coming to church, that was when people started coming in more and they started tightening. So when wow. one door closed, another door opened. Another door opened. I have yes. never met him. He has never come in again. Oh. Since the last time we were told that he gave the money at the car park. And wow. That was another encounter. A great divine provision. Things mm -hmm. open up. Um, later on, um, we we had what we call the um um the the the, the C okay it, it it's something with church multiplication fund good church mu multiplication fund the CMN church mu CMF church multiplication fund and it has to do with um um the general council through the district council and then we started getting something to cushion ourselves from there. And then the church started growing and growing and growing. We were just moving, breaking in the buildings. You know, in America, the walls are plywood. So we're just breaking in and people were coming and the church was growing. Then one day, I had um, a baby dedication and had visitors coming from, you know, every part. The, 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 it was, they were twins. Uh, the first baby dedication were twins. So people were really coming in. And because we were sharing the, the restrooms, I have not been attending to our public restroom because it was an open area. So one day I went in there and I had a shock of my life. And I said, mm, this is very bad. So I impressed on the heart of the church and said, we have to buy our building. You know, 
And it was something, it was like, I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, telling them some story. They were like, Pastor, you just here about two, three years, you want to buy a building. Here, you have to be here for about 15, 20 years, Pastor. I said, no, we can do this. We have to buy a building. So I pushed it to them. And then the Sunday before a major annual fundraising, another divine visitation. I was in the office of the church and an old man came there. He was, he had a hunchback, oh. very dirty, with tattered clothes and had some kind of skin disease and had something on his back. He walked straight to our corridor. There were other churches and he said he wanted to see the pastor of this church. So they brought him in. I said, hey, I said, think how can somebody be so dirty in America like this? An elderly man, quite short, with a hunchback. And he said, can you give me money? So I went in, and he, he demanded $20. So I went in, went to the ushers, uh, the, um, the account department. I said, can you give me about $40? So I was giving him $40. He said, no, $20. Then I said, I said, no, this, this man is not usual because of my first encounter. And then I said, I got to find out whether this man is a human being or not. So I said, can I pray for you? Can I lay my hand on you and pray? He said, no, don't touch me. If you want to pray for me, move some few. He, he didn't want me to get close to him. He said, move some few radios from me. He said, wait for me and pray. Yes, and pray for me, but don't touch me. Oh. Then, I, then I smiled. So I gave him the money and I prayed. So when he was leaving, he looked through the, you know, the, the room. He looked, length and breadth of the room, he looked around and he left. I sat in my chair for a while and I said, no, let's trace this man. Where is he coming from? How can a man be so dirty in America? Where is he coming? I, I thought that maybe he's a homeless man, but for the fact that he had debt on him, uh -huh. they couldn't trace him. We were in the third floor, so there was an elevator. They went down the elevator. They went, they couldn't trace the man. Huh. The next day, during our annual fundraising, the people that came, the money we got, there was no way in the normal sense that we could raise that, that, that amount of money. So I knew it was a divine visitation. God sent another angel. And huh. that money we gave, was a blessing that was released on us. So that's how we got our first building. And then we moved in with our, our, our into our first building now. By the grace of God, um, we had our battles, struggles here and there. And let me let me say this because it was also bless somebody. You know, uh, when the building was bought in this country, they deal with building courts. And uh -huh. I didn't know. We just we just bought the property. They have to look at the number of people that comes into the church in relation to uh, the parking spaces. It has to coordinate. I didn't know that. Uh, we had just some few parking spaces behind the building. And so to, to encourage somebody, I had to go to court mm. to be the state. God gave me wisdom. I didn't tell the church. Five years I was going to court. Wow. Yes, because I didn't want them to panic. Mm -hmm. It's their money we used to buy the building. Mm -hmm. So I was doing serious intercessions and warfare. Then later on, I got to know that I was reported by some people around. I had seen people put charm at the at, at the back of our car, at, at my car park. I saw a charm and all. And these are just some things that you go to God sent you by yes the devil will also come in so many ways I fought all kinds of battles all kinds of battles so about five years going to court it's only one of my trusted Dickens that knew what was happening there'll be a time I'll be traveling and then they will say they want to come for inspection and quickly have to move some of the chairs and you know make sure that everything is set to relate then the Lord gave us a breakthrough with a school that is opposite the church now. And uh, they gave us their parking space. 
So the lawyer has to use that and all that just to encourage somebody that God will send you. It doesn't mean that it will be easy. And when you are an apostle, you are also a principality on the positive sense for the Lord. And the word principality from the Greek means an influencer. Yeah. So you got to be able to influence people, the system, mm. and then money. So mm. your warfare is not only against the devil. You are dealing with people. There's the human will of spiritual warfare. There's the systematic will of spiritual warfare. And there's mm. also the realm of you know, of the of the demonic that you are dealing with. So you are not only, you know, praying and then you must be able to entrench because you must influence the church. God will use the aroma of the church to touch lives, the miracles, the signs and wonders. I could look at somebody and tell the person, by, by next week, when you open your box, your green card will be there. Huh. Yes, like that to put my whole ministry and the church on, online. Then my wife would say, I'm sure of these things that you have been saying. And to <laughs> glory, none of my words fall to the ground. They will move when I sense I speak, it comes to pass. 13 years of marriage with that kids, after, after the blessing of babies. Last year alone, 25 babies were, were dedicated. Wow. Like a blessing. In 2017, we had 15 weddings. Uh back to back the whole year oh. so there has been things that god has used to touch people and breaking of yokes and all kinds of things in the realm of the spirit that have been a great testimony and so the enemy will try to come and poke you bring all kinds of confusion bring all kinds of things but to the glory of god this is how far Ebenezer the lord has brought us to the glory of god this is how far Ebenezer yeah. has brought us. Yeah, yes. Mammy Comfort says that God bless you, Reverend. For Mammy's yes. message, I will read it. Auntie Jesse on uh, YouTube says that God bless you for honoring our invitation, man of God, and our blood, uh, blood be brother. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, so, viewers, this is how far God has brought us. But we want Daddy to give us a word today. Mm. What is the take home that you want people who have listened to you today to mm. have? For me, I've taken about three out of them. Now mm. I've taken the principality part as an influence. So I get mm. to know that ah, I'm also part of principalities here mm. on earth to influence people's life and draw men onto God. What are, What is the take home that you want people to take in a few minutes? Amen. That's Amen. a lot. I don't want to touch the Bible. So that mm. I'm going to preach not about but um, I'm an apostle of hope. Mm. That's my call, mm. to bring hope to the hopeless. My ministry attracts people who, who are suffering rather than people who have it all. Mm. Yeah, and I know my path. Mm. If you're a pastor, I'll start with ministers. Know your calling, because if you are not important, God will not call you. If what you have is not needed, whether you went to school or you didn't go to school, whether you are from a good a good background, no background, whether you are struggling or you have oh. been struggling, know that for whatever reason God called you, know that reason and stay true to the core and stay to your path and be sure where you are. That's where exactly God called you to be. If you get to know these things, then don't be moved because we don't start climbing a ladder from the top. You will start the ladder from the base. And in this day and age where because of social media and exposure of things, you will see what is happening at the other side of the grass. You will see what is happening in your neighbor's house. You see all these things, even professions and all that. Be content. Because godliness with contentment is a great game. Be content, be very living contentment. Because the generation is being pushed in a way such that if you don't learn to be content and run your race and finish your course, because at the end of it all, the one who will reward you are not the human beings around you, it's God. And 
if you do his assignment well, I'm very happy that I'm called to America and I'm not called anywhere. And I'm happy that I'm in the will of God and I'm happy with what God is doing with my life. And so many lives being transformed. Two Sundays back, a gentleman uh, came in here. He said, Pastor, you don't know me, but in 2015, you preached in Cedar Mountain. You gave me a a prophetic word, and since 2015, I've been looking for you. You said wow. I'll get a scholarship to PhD, and I was not supposed to be in Ghana, I'll be in UK. And true to your word, um, I've graduated as a PhD. How I got to UK is another story all by itself. I came to he came to Indiana, and he said he's flying out, but he he has to find me. So he found his way here. We sat down just for ten minutes. And he blessed me and he said, I want to encourage you that you have no clue about what God is using you to do. So I want people to know that they should stay true to their calling. Today, if somebody is, is called to be a minister in music, you also want to become a pastor. Oh. If somebody is called in some kind of area or dimension, maybe to be a kingdom promoter, you also want to become a pastor. It's becoming a struggle. You can see how it is. And then for the young ones too that are coming in, coming up in ministry, it's a process. Mm. It's not a location. It's not a destination. It's a process. Take mm. your time and grow. Some want to be big to just by the next day. They just want to grow big. It's a process. Go through process because every tree grows up, but it goes down first. And I want to encourage everyone that the basics of your faith is hope. Keep hope alive. Without hope, faith is baseless. Know that there's a future for you. Know that tomorrow is real. Know that there's a God. Know that you've been called in such a time like this. Know that you carry destiny. Have hope. Hopelessness is what leads to suicide. It's the basis. If you don't have hope, you'll be depressed. And build your faith on hope. And you will never be disappointed because hope has the strength to take you to the next level. Even when your faith is going down, hope Amen. will keep you through. God bless Amen. you. Life Amen. is indeed a process. God bless you all. God bless you, Reverend Dr. Apostle Leeford Bohene. I'm so, so filled up today, super filled up today and it was so nice having you on our show my encounter at jericho i know the way i'm filled others are also filled and remember beloved if you are watching us now remember that life is indeed a process life is indeed a process stretch your faith stretch your faith and you will surely get there the stems need to be very deep down there for your tree to be tall up there. So the taller you want to be, the deeper you have to be. This is coming from Apostle Dr. Leeford Bohene. So to you all, we thank you for watching. We thank you for your comments all on Facebook. I see but time is fast friends on our time day. We thank you for watching. Keep sharing and the life of others who is going to help somebody who is losing hope today for the man to get a hope so it's coming from Center of Hope. Center of Hope people, we say God bless you all, all the way to Chicago from Pastor Mark and all members of Upper Room. We say God bless you all. God bless you also, viewers, for watching. God bless my manager. God bless my protection uh, 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 manager. Uh, Pastor Dan is always here with me. God bless you. God bless you all for watching us. We'll come your way with another wonderful edition, God willing, next week. So bye-bye for now. Like a